In trouble. Yeah. Good. Uh, my name is Eric. I'm with Book Soup, and we're happy to have Brenda Perlin with us to discuss her book, Punk Rocker. Uh, before we get started, I'd just like to mention a few housekeeping notes. Uh, Brenda's books are available all at the front register. Uh, we have not only Punk Rocker, but LA Punk Rocker and LA Punk Snapshots as well. Uh, your purchase benefits this wonderful author, and it supports our humble bookstore, and we greatly appreciate it, so thank you. Uh, following tonight's event, Brenda will be signing books at the back information desk. Uh, we don't have register back there, so make sure you buy your books at the front before you go back to signing. Um, I want to encourage all of you to sign up for our email list. When you do, you'll receive updates on the store and events uh, like this one, which we host almost nightly. Uh, sign up sheets are available at the front register and at the back information desk as well. Uh, lastly, I'd like to remind you to please sign your cell phones. Thank you. Uh, Brenda Perlin is an independent contemporary fiction author of five titles and numerous short stories. She's the author of the highly acclaimed Brooklyn and Bow Chronicles as well as the graphic novellas Ty the Bull and Alex the Mutt. Tonight she'll be discussing her book, Punk Rocker, the sequel to her best-selling punk anthology, L.A. Punk Rocker. Please join me in welcoming our first reader, Brenda Perlin. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm really nervous because there's not people. I, I like crowds, so I'm a little bit, you know, but I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that you guys drove on a Friday night with traffic and dealing with that and still wanted to show up. And, and like I was saying to you right now is that, you know, Janet, Stephen, there's something in it for them. But there's a passion. This is a passion project. It's not about money. It's about what's in your heart, something that was important to you at a time period in your life that kind of makes you what you are today, good or bad, because we had some really bad stuff that happened during that time, but we also, this this was, um, you know, our coming of age. This was our coming of age story, and it changed us, seeing the good and bad, and maybe we had to grow up fast, maybe faster like Stephen had to grow up really fast because he was so young, but we all had to grow up fast because we saw some, you know, really ugly things on the street. So, but we survived it, thank goodness, and a lot of people didn't. We lost a lot of friends during the way. I know people that, you know, put the, um, you know, went in the car and, you know, committed suicide, you know, turned the ignition on with the um, garage closed because no one understood them. Or they were gay and their parents said, you know, you're nothing to me. Or, you know, they got caught up in drugs and they didn't survive where other people did. But um, going back to the punk day, something I really didn't think that I needed to do, but then once I got into it, I realized that I do need to, because that, even though I've kind of hidden it for a lot of years, that's who I am. That's a part of who I am that's embedded in me. I mean, I go back to Girl Scouts or Brownies. I was a punk back then. Even though I, there wasn't a title for it, it wasn't a name, I didn't put black makeup, I didn't do the... I was a punk. I didn't relate to the other people. I didn't understand, you know, why they thought it was important what they talked about or, you know, um, you know, fitting in. I, I couldn't relate to these people. I didn't, when I got into the punk scene, I all of a sudden, I was with a bunch of people that were creative, that were open-minded, that were accepting of you. It didn't matter that you were like them. You didn't have to be like them. You could be yourself, and it was cool, and you were you were learning and growing with them and, you know, making mistakes, and it was, you know, it was a period of growth, but also, you know, of course, it was about the music, too, and the music sung to us. The, the music was inspiring, and it was cool, and... You know, with someone like Steven, who actually, I never played in a band, although, what did I tell you we were called? We were called, um, we had a band, me and Susie had a band for about a minute. We never, I never played an instrument, so I don't know what I thought I was going to do in this band, but, you know, we, we did try a band. Um, remember, remember I had that little emblem on my hand? I had the little... Frustrated youth. Frustrated youth, thank you. Frustrated youth. But everybody did a band back then. You could, you could have a band, and it was okay, and you didn't have to be great, because... No one was great, but it was about the music and being together in the scene and the energy and the vibe. So going back to the punk scene um, was enlivening for me. And I want to say, you know, you know the, the whole thing, the book thing, as far as, you know, publishing a book and trying to sell a book and marketing a book, it sucks. Because you have to be a person that you're not, you know, you have to try to put yourself out there and you have to you know, be a salesman. I'm not a salesman. And I'm a punk. I'm a punk who just, I'm still that same kid that just loves the music and loves the energy. I mean, you know, and even though, like now, I don't really go to, I don't go see bands, you know, I don't really see, I don't go to any clubs really. Although Billy Idol, and Billy Idol, I know he's not considered punk, although when he first started out with Generation X, he was punk. But there's something about, you know, now that I've seen him a couple of times, and, uh, but, you know, I, I, all of a sudden I feel like that young person, you know, that 15, 16 year old. 
it's the music. And I'm bopping to it, I'm feeling the energy, and I feel young, and I feel alive, and all my problems just fall away. That whatever physical problems I have, emotional problems I have, whatever it is, problems at home, they go away because it's the music. And no one's judging me, and that's that's the beauty of it. So, you know, I, I'm just going to give just a little history, I'm not going to go on too long, but in 2008 I was paralyzed. I was a healthy person, I was a, a, a personal trainer, and I was really healthy, and then from one day, it was Thursday, by Sunday, I couldn't walk. My, my, I was totally paralyzed, and basically, people didn't know how to look at me, because here I was, this one strong girl, and I turned to like 90 pounds, and they didn't, like the young physical therapist didn't even know how to relate to me, because they thought this girl was and they just didn't even know how how they're going to look at me in the face because they know how powerful I am. And but you know what? I, I had it in my mind, like you know, being a punk and being strong-minded, that I'm going to fight this. I'm going to do whatever it was. And I was Rocky Balboa, and I did the exercise even afterwards to get myself back. And who knows? I might not have walked. Not everybody walks again, you know. But I know what it's like to be screwed. There's Perry. That is the photo. Go show him the photo. That is Perry. That's the best photo of the entire book. Uh, hi. It's good to see you. Wow. Oh, that's so nice. So that, see that, you know what? Now, see, it doesn't have to be a full room. It's a matter of having people, Alex, having Daniel, and every people, Kevin, who goes out of their way to be here. And that's what's been, it's been the best feeling ever because it, it, it brings you back to that time period when not caught up in, in making money and caught up in being doing everything right and being all perfect and this and that. It, it's about cool people, understanding, being, you know, loving the music. And I think that's a big part of it. I think we're all really into music and I think that's the beauty of it. So I'm glad that you guys are here. I'm psyched that you're here and I hope that you're, you're going to write another story. I really want to do one more and then we'll call it a day. But I really, I love, I love this because it brings me back to that time period, and I'm connecting. I've connected, like on Facebook, I'm connecting to people that I have not talked to, and I'm serious, 35 years. And because of that, I really, I had no idea about Facebook. I wasn't interested in Facebook. I'm just telling you, there are people out of the woodwork that go, God, I think I know you, like um, Scott R Ramos. I haven't seen him in 35 years. There's so many people that all of a sudden. You know, they're back in my life, and it's it's cool. So I want to thank you guys for being here, and I want to thank Janet for being a part of this, and I want to thank Stephen because, like I said, there's nothing in it for you. You're doing it, and I appreciate it. But I, I think your stories are great, and I'm just really, I feel blessed that you guys think enough of me to want to participate because a lot of people said they would, and they didn't. They all said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, um, you know, they got me all psyched for it, and then they backed out. And so I just want to thank you. And you guys are cool for showing up. And there, see, now, now you got to get the picture out here, Chris. Like this is a, this is all about passion. I love this guy. And well, you got to look at the picture at Okie Dog with Chris. This guy I love. And seriously, 35 years now, I did see him once. We saw each other in the valley. But these people were important to me, and we all lost contact. Maybe some of you all have a little relationship, but to actually be in each other's lives again, even a little bit, and to see what they're doing, what they're up to. I've seen him travel the world and what he's doing, so I'm I'm thrilled. So thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.